I will try to emphasize the main ideas and to avoid any unnecessary formalism. So the two main concepts, two main concepts are the following. So the first one is the notion of universal effective Morphism. And the second one is a notion of morphism of well, let me use another chalk effective. This is. So before giving the definition, just, just be aware that the word effective does not have the same meaning. Hmm? Ah, well, hmm. yeah, uh, okay. So, so it, it is just to emphasize that it's the same word, but you will see it's a, it's a different concept. Okay, so let me give the, the definition. So, uh, so let's see, be a category with uh, fiber products. And so for us, actually, it will be the category of schemes. And we have the following definition, a morphism. Uh, let's call it P from X to Y in C is called an epimorphism. So this is the first part of the definition of an epimorphism if for any object Z, uh, the map from from C from Y to Z well, that is denoted by P star. So this is just the map which send any F to the composition uh, uh, FP. And so we say that this an epimorphism is something that so that this is always injective. So just an, an example here. In the, in the category of sets, uh, epimorphism is just a subjective map. It's the same thing as a subjective. And so we need a stronger notion of epimorphism, which is uh, the following. So let me call it three because there will be a two la uh, later. So we say that P is an effective epimorphism. Uh, denoting by uh, P1. So we can form the, fi the fiber product. Uh, and so we have, we have the two projection. Uh, so P1 is a projection to the first factor, P2 is a projection to the second factor. So with this notation, uh, one has uh, for all Z, let us know anyway, then for all Z, the 
the diagram. So we have on of y into z. So we have this star. We have on of x into z. And so here we have the two maps, the two pullbacks. going into form of this type of product. So if this diagram is exact, so which means that uh, this R is exhaustive and its image is exactly equal to the set of those G going from X to Z such that uh, GP1 is equal to GP2. Okay, and, and so this is called also the equalizer of one star, two star. Okay, so any map from X to something uh, whose composition with the two projections as the same comes already from 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 one. Okay, so this is uh, the, the important, uh, the most useful notion. And now there, there are an intermediate one. So one says that P is universal AP. And so P is unis effective AP. If for any base change map uh, Y prime uh, to y, uh, as a map, uh, let's call it P prime, which goes from, let's call it X prime, so this is a cyber product. Okay, so if we, if we base change uh, P, uh, any base change uh, the function, is is still uh, AP, uh, respectively, effective AP. Okay, so so as I said, the, the most important notion is is this one. Universal effective epimorphism, meaning that it's an effective epimorphism and it remains so after every base change. And uh, so let me give an example uh, for Lemma, for which in my notes there's a number 8.3. If a P uh, admits a section, section sigma, so a map going in the other direction, then P is universal effective. Okay, so let's prove this. Uh, so let, let's remark first that uh, having uh, having a section is preserved by base change. Preserved 
by phase change. So it suffices to prove that it is effective. It suffices to prove that P is effective for P. And so we have to prove that uh, this, uh, we have to prove that this is like a diagram here, like that. And so it's clear that pi star is injective. And since the composition, which is a, uh, so so having a section means that uh, sigma p is the identity. So this is this. Uh, this is the identity. So p star is, is clearly injective. And so we have to prove that now it is exact. So let's, so I do, how do I want to call it? So let g. Uh, of x such that gp1 is equal to uh, gp2, and consider the morphism tau that goes from x to the fiber product, and so which sends any x to, so what do I want to take? Uh, x and we project and, and take the same reflection in the sigma. Okay. Uh, uh, but then, uh, Uh, then map G, so we see that it is the same. So we can do, we can do first tau and then project to the first factor and then G. So this is yeah, so this is a map that says X to X. So this is we have this. And my hypothesis this is G P2 of tau. And so this is G sigma P. Okay, and uh, and so this this pre uh, so hence G is just a P star of F. Uh, Why right. F is this one? Okay, so there is this. Uh, this, this nice result that says that uh, a map with a section is, uh, is always a universal effectivity morphism. And uh, now just to, to a spoiler for the, the rest of, the, of this lecture, uh, the theorem, which is 8.4 in my part, uh, in the category of schemes. Uh, every faithfully flat, uh, quasi compact, uh, quasi compact uh, morphism. is a universal effective implement. Okay, so this is, okay, so I said that as we will see universal effective epimorphism are important. And there are plenty of them in the category of schemes, uh, namely uh, uh, the face really flat quasi-compact quasi morphism. Okay, so,
So now the idea is the following. So we consider morphism at P and S prime to S uh, in C. And one wants to study uh, the base change, base change function. And it is star, which goes from the category of object of S to the category of objects of S prime. So an object here is just a map uh, from uh, an object. And so to this, we associate the fiber product. Okay. Okay, so this is uh, the base change functor. And uh, when I say we want to study, uh, basically the idea is to understand the essence, essential image that is given uh, an object X prime over S prime. How do we know if it, if it comes, if it is obtained by base change from an object over S? And now we have to, to make the study, we have to introduce the following notation. So which come in two parts. So the, the first part of the notation is the following. Uh, so uh, we let S double prime sub one. So this is the, the object S double prime, which is this fiber product. And it is uh, regarded as uh, as uh, uh, as a ball as prime via the first projection. Okay, so. Uh, so we say that the, the structure, the structure of morphism, is, is this one. Okay. This is the S project. Uh, is the first projection, and uh, we define similarly S prime two. So this is the same object, uh, but now the 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 structure map to S prime is the second projection. And, uh, okay. So this is uh, the part one of the definition. This is the, the only part that we will use immediately. And so let me, uh, let me write here the, the second part, which will be used a bit later. Uh, so let's do the same for the triple uh, fiber product. So S triple prime is the, uh, triple product. And we put the index one if we, if we view this as an object of S prime, he has a first projection. And so we have similarly S triple prime two and three, or we use the other projection. And uh, for I strictly smaller than J in uh, the set one, two, three, uh, let us denote by a projection J I. So this is a projection from the to, to the double product, and here these are the factors i and j. Okay, so we have the 
So we have this triple product and the projection with indices two one is a projection on the first two. Three one is a projection on the first and the last. And three two is a projection on the uh, last two. And I, and I write on purpose uh, in this order uh, because it's a, it's the right order for the composition of map. Okay, so I put the, the larger in index first. But, okay, so, so this is part two. We, we, we don't need it immediately. Uh, and now for any, uh, for any objects. An S object is just a morphism, is just a, well, a scheme with a, a, a base, uh, with a map to the base scheme uh, S. Uh, also denotes a let uh, so. Uh, Oh, no, sorry. For any object uh, of S prime, so let us denote by X double prime sub one. So this, it is this one, which is, uh, so we make the fiber for this fiber product. And And similarly, we define the, this as F prime, fiber product of F prime with, okay, so this, this all look very abstract for the moment and uh, one may think that, that these guys are all the same, but actually they are not. And we will see example in the uh, in a few minutes. Okay. So 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 these guys are, are just technical tools to decide whether X prime uh, come by by change or not. And so we will see that if X prime. Uh, comes uh, is x is a is a fiber product x of fiber product of x of s with s prime. Then these guys have special properties, and so this will be the op the opt for a criterion to decide uh, whether x prime comes from from below. Okay. Um, so, just some intermediate vocabulary. So, I'm, I'm just going to give a, def a definition and then say it's the same as the previous one, but well, that's the way it is, as a both, both notations is. Uh, so let x, y now uh, be s objects and set x prime and uh, x double prime, so this is uh, x plus x prime. And so we have, the, we have the two maps here, so the two projections from s double prime to s prime that uh, come here, and the same for y 
and we do the same for one. And uh, consider the diagram. Consider the following diagrams. Uh, so we have some um, of the S between our two objects. And here we have from between the base change objects. And we still denote this by P, P star. So we call that uh, the mapping loop by uh, base change, by P, by pulling back by P. And here we have the two. Uh, we have also the map induced by these two projection. The homomorphism of object of a S double prime. Okay. And uh, one says that P is a morphism. of descent if this diagram, which I call star, is exact. Okay, so, okay, so this is uh, 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 but Using the definition of a fiber product, well, so, so this is the same. Ah, is exact uh, for all uh, S objects. And so on. Okay. So, uh, so we have this map here. But so this is the same as from S of X prime. So X prime is just X cross S. And here, we, so these two are, are equal. Right? The property of the, of the of bit change is that this form is the same as this one. And here we have also the, the two map induced again by the two projections. And so this lands into from S of X tensor over S, S double prime, okay? And let's call it uh, number five. Okay, and for some reason, let me put a, a subscript Y here. So th these two diagrams are, are the same. You know, so, so, so this one is exact for all X and Y, if and only if the second one, the second line is exact for all X and Y. Okay, but exactness of the second row uh, for uh, all y and the fixed x. Uh, this is equivalent uh, by definition. Oh. And uh, yeah, I forgot to say another thing. Uh, so this is also the, this fiber product is also the same as uh, as this one. Uh, so what do I want to say? Uh, So I, I claim that this is the same as uh, as saying that uh, the morphism which, which I call Px 
uh, which goes from x cross uh, s1 to x is effective at b. And indeed, uh, so we have this, um, we, we have the project. Uh, so this is an object of X, uh, as I say, and if we make the tensor, if we make the fiber product of X uh, with itself, so this is the same uh, as here. Uh, And uh, uh, okay, so what 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 does this mean? So this means that uh, if you look at the map form of uh, X process. Uh, Uh, XY, because this goes by uh, this notation to form uh, So let's call this X prime, so this goes into X prime Y, and we have two maps from X X prime Y, and so, uh, oh yeah, so I'm sorry, so, the, so that was, uh, so this this guy here, it's the one here. Sorry, okay. And uh, so uh, this is so this is the x double prime here. Uh, and so we see that if we fix x, the exactness of uh, of this row for all y uh, means that uh, this morphism is an effective epimorphism. And saying this, saying that this one is an effective epimorphism for all x, so this means in turn that the map we started with f prime to s is universal effective epimorphism. Okay, so uh, we have the proposition. that uh, P is a morphism of uh, descent uh, if and only if P is universal uh, effective epimorphism. Okay. So uh, as I said, nothing new. We, we just introduce a new word and uh, and show that it, it coincides with the previous context. But so they, they were introduced in, in some more some, some more different context. Okay, so coming back to so I said that the two important things are effective universal epimorphism and morphism of effective descent. And so Effective descent is something different because we, we see that a morphism of descent is already the same thing as an universal effective epimorphism. Okay, so we, now uh, we have to talk about uh, effective descent. Um, but uh, before we do this, uh, we do we have to. I have to define uh, equivalence relations. Oops, no, I, I want to keep this uh, for the moment. So let me not erase this. Uh, uh, can I erase this? Well, 
Well, uh, a related concept uh, is the following. So an equivalence uh, relation uh, on an object X in our category. is a, a monomorphism that R goes into uh, the product X plus X uh, such that uh, for all uh, objects T, as a set R of T is uh, a graph uh, of an equivalence uh, relation on the set X of T. Uh, of course, in a functorial, in a uh, and this is uh, and this is a functorial uh, with uh, respect with uh, respect to uh, morphism okay so if, if we have another T prime, so we, we have another equivalence relation. And so, yeah, the, the, the natural map extends uh, one end to another. So, this is a bit uh, abstract. Uh, okay. And in this case, uh, in this case, uh, one denotes might be one. And P2, the restriction to R, a restriction to R of the project of X plus X. So we have the two projections, and we denote by P1 and P2 the restriction to. Uh, Okay, so so just a remark here. Uh, here I assumed that C as a final as a final object P e, and when I as a an uh, fiber product is in, means that actually it's taken over the finite object. So I, I say this only because if uh, C is a category of scheme of a fixed base scheme, uh, then uh, then what, what I denoted simply by X plus six is actually the, the fiber product of S. Okay, so I, I do not write S just for well for brevity of, of notation, but uh, well, so there is a, a, a finite object somewhere inside. Okay, so this is an, uh, an equivalence relation, but uh, let us give two important examples of equivalence relation, and so you 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 see that you are in fact already familiar with them. And uh, first example, which has my notes, let uh, P from X to Y be a morphism. Uh, well, I, I will take S. 
uh, then we get equivalence uh, relation which we may call RF, which is actually the fiber product over Y. And so this sits inside this top. Okay, so this is a, an equivalent relation for a, for any any T. And so RF of T is just the set of all X1, X2, and X of T plus X of T, such that they have the same image. Okay, so uh, any morphism uh, define an equivalent relation on the, on the source, which is just adding the same image. Okay, so this is a, 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 a second example is the one given by free actions of a group objects. Group object H. Uh, so H is a. Uh, uh, so H is a, is a group object in our category. So it's a group scheme if we are in the category uh, of scheme. And uh, and and. Uh, Uh, well, so suppose uh, we have an action. So let, let us say that H acts on the right of it. So we have a map like this, which is an action map uh, with the, the usual action. And we want to say that action is free. Is free. If uh, for any object uh, uh, in C, uh, the group H of T acts uh, freely on the set of this of then so, so we have a, an action morphism. Uh, so let's uh, so at the level of arbitrary uh, t points. Uh, so it's uh, so let's let's let us write. Here. So it takes a, a couple x h to uh, h acting on. Uh, then we have the equivalent relation. Uh, relation. Let's call it R h. Uh, then we have an equivalence. So we just consider the image uh, of uh, so. Ah. So we have a monomorphism from X times H uh to the uh, product and to, we send just x to the capital x time h okay and and so the image well so this is a monomorphism so well uh, maybe uh maybe i, I should uh, okay so i call i call r R H, so this this product, and we consider it as a so it's a it's a subfactor of a fixed process. Okay, and so a free action is 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 needed to ensure that uh, this this map is a monomorphism at the different at the level of points so the the map is injected. Uh, okay, so. Uh, okay, so we can erase this. So a decent morphism is the same thing as the universal effective uh, morphism. So now we, we get to the hurt 
of the topic uh, because we, we have not used uh, the, the extra notation. And uh, so I, I recall we want to study uh, base change. from the objects of S to the objects of S prime. So the first thing to note that if X is an S object and X prime is the object obtained by a base change, then This one satisfies three properties. Uh, so firstly, uh, there exists an isomorphism So what is, so, uh, so what is this? So this is uh, so what is this? So, so we uh, so we have this S prime object, and we make it into a S double prime object by making this Faber product. Well, this one is over S prime by the first projection. Uh, but by the associativity of the fiber product, this is the same as X without making any choices. So, well, there, there is just one M of films. And so this is also canon canonically equal to, to the other bay change. Okay, so. Well, so, so there is a canonical isomorphism between the, the two pullbacks. And if we denote by delta uh, the uh, diagonal map from uh, S prime to this fiber product, uh, so this is a uh, S double prime. So th this is a uh, so this is a uh, both are schemes of S double prime. So we can uh, pull back uh, this over S prime. And then we see that uh, the pullback of this item of this is just the identity morphism of S prime. And uh, the third thing. Uh, um, so one has, if we, so we have this isomorphism between uh, the, the double products. And if we pull this back, by the projection so if we have three factors and so we, we look at the projections that goes to the first two so phi is just the switching uh, between one and two and here uh, we can consider three two i'm going to the triple one and here we have three one. And so this diagram commutes. And so in, in, in fact, uh, uh, each, well, is a canonical morphism. Well, so X I prime, so, so this is just X, X tensor S 
S prime. And we make the, the fiber products using the ice projection with S factor prime. And so, so this identifies canonically with, with this one. And so if we make this canonical identification for all I, every morphism is the identity. And so it's obvious that the diagram is commutative. So we have this, does this, uh, this property. Uh, so this motivates the following uh, definition. So definition uh, eight point ten. And so the first part of the definition is that a decent uh, datum, datum on an S prime object X prime. Uh, so, so, so it is a descent that that you relative to the base change that we are considering. So, what is this? So, is an uh, S double prime exomorphism phi that goes from X double prime one to X, okay. Uh, okay, so uh, let me recall here that here, yeah, so this is X prime, uh, which, which is an object, and so we make the, the fiber product using the first projection with S prime. So we want an isomorphism with the other the other guy. Uh, uh, such that uh, the, the same condition are satisfied. Uh, 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 such that uh, the so-called cycle condition holds, that is, this pullback is equal to the composites of the other two. And we will see that this, and by the way, this implies that the pullback to the diagonal is the identity. Okay. And so, so this, so this formula, so this is precisely the, the reason that I, I wrote the subscripts in, in this order because I want to have one, two, two, three. Okay. So a decent data is uh, is this, and uh, okay. So so this is uh, the. Uh, so this is precisely for, for writing this co cycle condition that uh, we needed the, the triple time tensor, the triple fiber product. So this is why we, we needed this, this part of the notation. Okay. And again, this looks uh, very mysterious. So let us illustrate this. Uh, uh, oh, let me just give uh, one more uh, notation. Uh, and so there is obvious, so there is obvious uh, notion of a more, uh, Ah, okay. Uh, there is an obvious notion of morphism. 
of S prime objects. Uh, yes, uh, this sums uh, that up. So if we have uh, an object X, X prime over S prime, which is given by uh, by this morphism of X, and uh, Y prime is this morphism. Okay, so uh, of course, uh, a morphism is just a S prime morphism from X prime to Y prime that is compatible with the descent data in, in an obvious sense. Uh, and so we get, so we get a category which we denote by uh, descent of uh, S prime of X. Okay, so this is a, this is a category of objects over S prime endowed with the descent data. Okay, and uh, uh, so let us give uh, uh, one uh, example. So example. So let S prime to S be a Galois covering, Galois covering, okay, with a uh, group uh, gamma. Uh, so in the category of schemes, this is uh, the usual uh, notion, but here this means that gamma acts on, uh, so let's say on the right, uh, on uh, S prime uh, by S morphisms. Uh, and uh, the morph and the morphism If we, for the natural morphism, which is defined, uh, which is defined, so it's an, a point and a group element gamma to S prime, S prime acted on by gamma is isomorphism. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, okay, then uh, we have isomorphisms. So in which order? So if we start with S prime times gamma times gamma, so we can go to S prime cross S prime cross gamma. And we can go to S prime cross S prime cross S prime. So here the fiber product of S. And so the map is just if I have S prime and two group elements, gamma one, gamma two. So we apply this isomorphism on the, on the first factor. Uh, so S prime gamma one, this one is unchanged. And this one now goes to S prime, S prime acted on by and S prime gamma one. Um, so let, let's say that just to fix ideas, so let's say that this is in the category of schemes. And uh, so, and so let's say that this is uh, uh, for uh, RB, sorry, T points. 
okay, so this is a morphism uh, uh, defined at the level of arbitrary T points by, by this action. Okay, uh, so, uh, and, and, and so, uh, well, hence, every uh, T point of as a proper product is of the form uh, as above. So it is some S prime acted on by gamma R, by ga some gamma one, and then the same one acted on by some gamma two. Okay. Again. Hello, a question. Yep. Uh, yeah. is, is your gamma an abstract group or what is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it a group object? Yeah, yeah. yeah, so just seeing of uh, the category of scheme and you, you have a, a, a finite etal map uh, of scheme, uh, which is a Galois cover in the usual sense and gamma is a, is a usual gamma, the usual Galois group. And so just think of, uh, of this case, uh, uh, just a field extension if you want. And now let's uh, now consider uh, S prime object X prime, that is, so we have a map F from X prime to X prime, and uh, suppose given an action of gamma on X prime, which is compatible with action on S prime. So this means that the obvious diagram, okay, so we have an action like this, and so we have the map here. And here, so this project to S prime. And so that was the, the given action. Uh, so this one, this is a given action. And so we want this to commute. And so uh, at the level, so this means uh, that for any, uh, if we take an, an arbitrary uh, point, uh, this means that if we take F of its prime acted on by some gamma, so this is the same as taking the image which is an element of S prime and action energy. So this is just the, the same. Okay, so if we have, uh, if we have uh, this, uh, then uh, X prime has a descent uh, datum uh, given by Uh, so I, I want an isomorphism uh, from uh, X prime and so fiber product with this one uh, uh, with uh, F prime. So what is this? So um, I, I want an isomorphism that that goes to the other one. And so what is this? So uh, what is the point here? So it's a, it's a, uh, so what is an, an arbitrary T point of this? So this uh, T point here is a triple, X prime, S prime, and uh, S prime gamma. 
because we so we use this uh, identification that any element of S double prime can be uh, written like this, and the product is over uh, S one. So this means that uh, so th this triple has the properties that X prime projects to S prime. And uh, there is the, the obvious action map of gamma. So this goes to X prime acted on by gamma, S prime, S prime gamma. Uh, and now, so this one has the property that with uh, the image of X prime is S prime gamma. Okay, so this innocent looking isomorphism is in fact quite important uh, because it means that you, you, you can do whatever transformation you, you want inside X, uh, uh, provided that it keeps uh, the, uh, the element of X prime, which is over the first copy of S prime, it has to go to the an element which is of a second copy. And, and so if we have a, a, an action of this abstract group, so you see that this, this gives you an isomorphism like this. Of course, the inverse is isomorphism is just, well, you take gamma, gamma inverse instead of gamma. So we have this isomorphism, and of course, it satisfies a cosmical condition. Um. Hello, here uh, gamma is a locally constant function on your value, right? No, no, no. Gamma is a... Uh, gamma is, I, may, I gamma may take valued points where the T is disconnected, then I'll get uh, gamma locally constant is what you will want. No. Uh, so gamma is, is, a, is a given abstract group. And, and this oh, no, element, small gamma, small gamma will be locally constant on your value uh, scheme T, right? When you take valued points, what does gamma mean? A locally constant. I, 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 I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking. I, 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 so we, we have this isomorphism at the level of T point, which means that any point no, but what is a T point of S prime cross gamma? Yeah. So is, the, is, the gamma will, the, the, the element of gamma will change in a T valued point of yeah. S prime cross yeah. all of gamma, right? Yeah. So, so, so this, this could be S prime, S, so this is, this could be a different S prime two. But because of yeah. that, the, the second coordinate uh, differs by the first one only by the action of some element gamma. Right. And it is this element gamma that we apply to the, to the X prime. Okay. So I, I, I don't know if it is a locally constant function or not, but we, we just use this, uh, this bijection at the level of, of T points. Yeah, but I'm saying when you write a T point, you will yeah. get a different small gamma on different components of T. Yes, you get different gammas, but the morphism is well defined. Okay. Uh, precisely, the, uh, I'm not saying that this, this morphism is easy to define, say, in the category of scheme, but it's obvious what the morphism is at the, at the, at the level of the function, and this is all that we need. And, and then, so this definition hides uh, some difficulties uh, in it, so we well, uh, the, if if you want to, to write this map uh, by, by formulas that uh, as a yeah 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 yeah. So so we, we have this section. So which means that uh, for. At the level of, of T points, the group gamma acts on the set S, S prime of T. 
And, and the fact that this is an isomorphism means that if we if we take a couple S prime one, S prime two, the second one is uh, is derived from the first one by by the, the action of some gamma. Okay, so now if we if we look at the at the cycle condition, uh, so uh, this one, so this is a set of uh, quadruples. So again, the second coordinate, we can write it like that. Of course, with a different gamma one, uh, depending on, on, the, on, the, on the chosen one. And so there is a... Um, and so X prime is over S prime. And so we just go to X prime gamma one, S prime, S prime gamma one. S prime gamma one gamma two. So you see, it is a, it is a morphism of a S tri per prime. That is, we we do not change this, but now this one is over this factor, and so this is uh, the pullback. And now we go to the. Um, it is and. Um, from, from this one, we go to X prime, active bound by gamma one, gamma two, S prime, S prime, gamma one, S prime, gamma one, gamma two. So we have this map, and now this guy is over the last one. And, and so here we have. And so we see that the uh, cross cycle condition. is indeed equivalent to the associative condition as that uh, X prime acted on by gamma one and then acted on by gamma two is the same as X one acted on by gamma one, gamma two. Okay, so so maybe this makes a, a co-cycle uh, condition more natural. And, and so in, in well, and so th this is uh, okay. So so this is uh, su supposed to be the mother of uh, the, the, of the sense theory uh, because Grotenik wanted to generalize uh, this. Uh, okay, so Galois descent existed already uh, at that time. Uh, so one knew how to descend uh, if, if if I make. Uh, uh, Galois extension of fields, uh, uh, one knew how to, to descend, and Grotendink uh, wanted to, to descend, to descend uh, using more general base change, and so he, he, invite, he invented this, uh, this notion of uh, descent datum, which comes directly from, from the notion of uh, Galois factor. Okay, so, yeah. Yeah, is it is it is it is uh, 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 what is uh, oh yeah yeah but in another context so yeah I think that she, she hmm? yeah yeah but I, I think she was uh, studying uh, something like uh, yeah she, she was studying uh, how is it called. A cross product algebra, something like this. Uh, so yeah, yeah. No, no. Galois. So this was Galois theory, but the, the the idea to formulate it in in, in that generality is is due to Grothendieck. But of course, the uh, the cross cycle condition is is is, is much older. Okay. Uh, so we have this notion of a descent uh, datum. Uh, um, Okay, so let me just add one uh, 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 remark. So three things are equivalent that P is a universal uh, effective epimorphism. 
So we have seen already that this is the same as P is morphism of descent. And the last thing is equivalent by a definition uh, that the uh, function uh, P star, which goes from the category of S objects, not to the cat uh, not to the to the raw category of uh, S prime object, but to the category of objects of S prime object equipped with a data descent data is uh, fully. Uh, because this this bait change uh, diagram that I, I wrote previously, uh, yeah. So so we had something like on S X Y is uh, uh, is the co equalizer of these two maps. And, and and so uh, saying that the morphism here uh, has the same images by by the two projection uh, precisely means that it's compatible with uh, the descent data, the descent data um, x y and y prime. So being a descent morphism is is really the same thing as so so this means that the base change functor from this home to this home. Yeah. So. Uh, this home does not go to, to the to the full home in the category of S prime object, but it it goes to the subset, which by definition is called the home in the descent category. Okay, so the morphism is fully faithful. And now uh, we can introduce the definition. Definition. So uh, let P from S prime to S be a morphism of descent. Of descent. Uh, and we have the following definition. Uh, on uh, S prime object, X prime, uh, descent, Datum is called effective if uh, there exists an S object X uh, such that uh, X prime, uh, which is a uh, descent uh, datum, is isomorphic to X base change with the canonical, the canonical descent data which I, which I described in the case of this, okay. In, okay, so uh, a descent data is called effective. So uh, uh, the object with the given descent data is the same as an object coming from, from below. Uh, and so one says, uh, so one says, P is morphism of effective uh, descent uh, if every uh, descent uh, datum on every x prime over s prime is effective. Okay, but so this is uh, this is uh, not often the case. Um, it's almost never the case. So uh, one has to content, we have to content ourselves with the following uh, notion. So let uh, D uh, be a full uh, subcategory 
across this category. And so, so for example, an interesting example, so call it quasi a fine S prime. So this is all the objects, all the objects with a descent datum uh, such that the morphism, the structural morphism explained to uh, is uh, quasi fine. Okay. And uh, and so in practice, one has to work with statements uh, like uh, this. So one says P is a morphism of effective uh, descent. Uh, for D, if every uh, if every uh, descent that on um, an object in this category is effective. Okay, and so let me illustrate this uh, immediately. And so the so the basic theorem is the following the following one. Uh, let uh, so from now on we we work in the category of schemes. And consider a morphism P from S prime to S uh, be uh, faithfully flat and quasi compact. Uh, then uh, P is a morphism. effective descent for the category of quasi defined uh, okay so this is uh, the, the, the well this is uh, the first uh, Basic uh, important result of the theory. Okay, so uh, so if you take you you if you x prime is a quasi affine over s prime, then every descent datum is effective. That is uh, the object uh, descent. Okay, so I'm going to explain a little bit uh, the proof of this theorem because some ingredients of the proof uh, will be used uh, later. Okay, I, I, will, I will stop in 10 minutes, uh, uh, less than 10 minutes. And so if, if I don't, you stop me. And uh, one of the, the following, uh, important technical lemma. So important uh, lemma for which in the notes of the number 8, 15. So consider uh, morphism. V and U with when we have a step. So if 
the composite is a universal effective repeal. Uh, so let me write this in a more suggestive way. So U V P U S, and here we have a composite. So U composes V. So if the composite is uh, universal effective, so is U. And secondly, uh, if U composed with V is morphous of effective descent, so is U. And we also have that if if uh, U and V are universal effective uh, morphism, epimorphism, so respectively uh, morphism of effective descent. So is the composite. Okay. So this is a this is a very important uh, lemma, and uh, uh, so let's give a, a, one more example of effect of morphism of effective uh, descent. So lemma eight point six c. So let u i be an open covering of our scheme S and let T denote the disjunct sum of this open subset. Uh, then the drawing of this is a morphism of effective uh, descent. Uh, so, it, uh, so it need not be uh, quasi-compact. Okay, so so one has to remember that uh, FPQC morphisms are good, but they are not the only one. The, the risky coverings are, are also good. Uh, and so, well, this is, uh, uh, okay, so what is, uh, so what is this uh, the fiber product? So this is just, uh, uh, Okay, and so this guy, so this is a, this is a, just the uh, intersection of this open subset. And so the, the first projection map uh, this one to uh, UI, and the second projection maps it to uh, UJ. Okay, so, uh, so we have this uh, morphism here. And so we take a scheme X prime over this thing. So this means that we have a, a disjunct union of, uh, of schemes over the, the UIs. And uh, in, in this case, what is a descent datum? A descent datum uh, relative to this morphism. But so this is this this is just just the usual gluing data, uh, gluing data on intersections. Mm. Uh, 
So what do you want? Well, they're not really intersectional, but uh, um, um, so we have isomorphism, uh, like. Uh, uh, this one, and, and so this this amount uh, to to giving uh, an isomorph. So this amount. So we take uh, so we take this scheme over the intersection U J. U I intersecting into U J. And, uh, and and considered as a sub and as, as an open sub scheme of the, of this one. And so you are given an isomorphism with the same, uh, let, let me write it in the other. So, and so this one is considered as a, an open subscheme on, of this one. Okay, so, okay, so you, 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 have, the, you have this scheme, so you, you have the open subset, which, which lies in each open subset lies in, in, two, in, in two different UIs. So you, you have this open subset and, 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 the, and the send data is just given isomorphism like this, which satisfies the usual, the usual associativity condition. And, and so the, the XI uh, glue to, uh, uh, so they, they glue together to, to a scheme of X. Uh, and so they are the restriction to the various open subset of uh, of a good on a scheme of a uh, of S. Okay, so this is a trivial example of uh, descent datum, and but it's an important one, and so we well we will use it uh, together with this important lemma uh, in the next lecture to give a, a sketch of the proof of this uh, important theorem. Okay, so I'm nearly finished. Uh, I, I'm I miss one of two pages of my lectures as well. We continue on, on this day. Okay, thank you.